So when it comes to conversion, it's something that I feel like doesn't get talked about enough or is just completely overlooked in our audio industry. Let me explain this by looking at two pictures. On the right hand side, let's just say this is a not so great converter. It lacks detail. It looks blurry. You can even look at the colors and see that they're being misrepresented now. Some parts are darker than they should be and some parts are even brighter than they should be now. On the left hand side, you can clearly see this image has so much detail, it feels richer, the colors are intense, and it feels a lot better to your eyes. The good converter did a better job of representing the actual image in the digital space. This is going to be more detailed, have more clarity, and it's gonna be easy for you to retouch this image, kind of like mixing when it comes to that. One thing's for sure, the image on the right is gonna be harder to quote unquote mix as opposed to the image on the left hand side. What we're gonna to do today is, I'm going to let you know and show you why I've switched over from my Prism Sound Titan legendary interface to the Apogee Symphony IO Mark II Special Edition. An interface that is modern, that sounds like today, and just sounds fresh and new to my ears. I wanted something that sounded more hi-fi, and I got it as soon as I got this Apogee Symphony IO Mark II Special Edition. So. We're gonna get techy, we're gonna get into details about a bunch of stuff, but I just want you to hear what it sounds like off rip at the very start of this video. So what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna do a simple pass through test. And basically what that means is I'm gonna spit out some music, a mix, out through the D-Days into the A-to-Ds and let you get an idea of what just the conversion itself is doing to the sound source. I'm gonna compare it to my Sterling Audio Harmony interface so at least you can compare it to something to have an idea of what it's actually doing. Don't worry, we're going to compare it to the Prism Sound Titan. We'll save those for later down the line in the video. But for right now, let me just get you an idea of what the A to D, uh, D to A conversion is just doing to a sound source that just passes through it right there. I've level matched both of these files within 0.4 dB of each other. I'll tell you why I did that later. Now, can you tell me which one is which? Okay, so if you chose A for the Sterling Audio Harmony interface, you are correct. And if you chose B for the Apogee Symphony IO Mark II Special Edition, you are correct. Now, what is the things that we heard between those two pieces? One, immediately off bat, as soon as I engaged the Apogee Symphony, I heard the noise go away. It got so much cleaner. Second thing I noticed, a much, much larger sound stage. I can literally hear the sound sides of my speakers explode, get much, much larger, and overall just feel so much better. Next thing I noticed, the transients. I noticed that my transients just had more clarity. They were sharper, they were cutting through just a lot stronger. They just felt better. It just felt more musical in general. There was more punch. It just sounded overall better. Now granted, obviously, this is a far, far cheaper interface, but I just wanna give you an idea of just what a simple pass-through through these converters sounds like and why it's so important to capture your sound with great conversion. We think about preamps so much, but here's the thing. You can have a Ferrari body, but what's underneath the hood? What does the engine sound like? And that's what I feel like people just kind of lose sight of when it comes to conversion. If that sound is not accurately being represented in the actual DAW from what you recorded, then what are you truly left with? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is let's listen to the mic preamps of the Apogee Symphony IO Mark II Special Edition versus the Sterling Audio Interface. And I just do this so I, once again, you can get an idea of what it sounds like compared to something or else you're just hearing it and going, I think it sounds great. Let's get an idea of what these preamps sound like uh, in general. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't wanna go back to the way it was when we lay off, stay off, when we used to do it all together. You've been on my mind lately, oh please don't change. Cause what we had is great. 
So if you chose A for the Sterling Audio interface, you are correct. And if you chose B for the Apogee Symphony IO, you are correct. What did you hear? I heard clarity. Even the air that I'm uh, bringing out of that vocal just simply by that performance, you can hear the top end just feels a lot more smooth. And you also notice that it also felt less harsh, which is what a lot of people I know suffer with. That lack of detail in that mid range that I was getting from the other interface is kind of one of the reasons or attributing to some of that harshness that you're getting. Now that I'm getting more detail out of those preamps with the actual Apogee Symphony, it makes it a little bit easier to mix because I'm getting so much of that frequency content well represented. Also keep in mind, I level match these files to a peak standpoint because obviously the performance is different between the two. So what you're gonna notice is if you have the audio file, you're gonna notice that both of them are peaking at the same exact point and I level matched them the best I could. So let's talk about the touchscreen display in general of the Apogee Symphony IO Mark II special edition. Right at the front of the touchscreen, you're greeted with the sample rate, which is awesome. And then you're also greeted with these display meters, inputs and outputs, as well as the digital inputs and outputs to let you know what's coming in and out of the system at all times. You also have up here headphones and the actual monitors, which you can also just click and turn up and down right into the front of the actual piece. This also coincides with the actual remote control that I showed you earlier in the app with the hardware piece that's the control itself, but I'll show you more on that later, but just know these both coincide with each other and I can actually do that on my remote control anyway, but it's awesome to have it in the touchscreen. Next thing you're seeing is that we're greeted with this monitor section, which obviously allows you to mute, dim, mono, your headphones or your speaker system. The other beautiful thing about this is I can literally create different configurations of speaker systems right in the Symphony I.O. If I have an Atmos setup, I can literally click on over to here and change the entire setup of speakers that the sound is outputting to. I'll show you more on that when we get to the actual control app. But just know I can literally change the entire configuration or manipulate it to whatever I want as far as how many speakers I have coming out or where it's coming from. Next, you're greeted with this input section, which obviously shows you your inputs as far as each one that's on your Symphony I.O. For me, I have a ton of inputs on this particular piece, and the fact that I can actually just come over here and switch it to a line level signal at any time is awesome. I can also change the impedance, which is great if you're trying to change the sound a bit, or just the input stage at, in general. You also have this soft limit button, which is awesome if you're trying to do something like clipping or anything like that. This is awesome to have in the piece, which you can experiment with this a bit and try to see what sound it gives you. It's, that's awesome to have in the piece. You also have your phantom power, of course, polarity switch, and also a high pass filter, which is great if you're just trying to get rid of, rid of just a little bit uh, on the input stage of your signal. If I just swipe on over to here, I can change the actual inputs as far as seeing what I want. And another great thing is the fact that I can come on over to here and actually change the actual input coming in from a calibration standpoint, which I don't wanna confuse people, but sometimes with analog gear, not all of the equipment is coming out, for instance, at one dB and coming back at, at one dB. So this is a great way to basically be able to calibrate those inputs to make sure that what's coming out is coming back in at the same level. This is an awesome thing to have because back in the day or with some pieces, you have to go in the back and kind of tweak and turn and calibrate the actual inputs on the back to get it to be correct coming in and back out. Long story, you could do a deep dive on that one, but just know I don't have to worry about that ever again. <laughs> Next, you'll see the outputs. And this is basically the same kind of like the inputs, just allowing you to see all your outputs that are feeding the actual speakers or whatever you have them feeding at in general. You can also change the stage as far as is it line level, is it mic level or whatever you want as far as the sound is concerned when it's coming out of your speakers. You can calibrate it to whatever you want on that end. Other thing you'll see is this digital section. Remember I told you I have two modules in mind. So module one obviously has ADAT and things of that nature, while module two doesn't. So it allows me to see that and manipulate the digital protocols that I have in my system right in front of the screen. On this side, you'll see the setup window, which is basically telling me about my system. There's a fan in here, which is awesome because I've never ever heard it or 
notice that it's even on, which is great for just making sure that it's keeping my interface cool and relaxed and when it's being in used. Next, you'll see the meter section, which is allowing me to manipulate just the meters. Do I want it to hold? Do I want it for peak? All kinds of things you can clear the meters. Do you want it to hold for two seconds? Do you want it to be infinite? Just holding it at the peak. All kinds of things. You've seen this in your DAW before, but this is great to have just on the front if you just want to change that really fast. Then you have the display, which is basically allowing you to manipulate the display. Of course, other side, you have the network, which I'm sure that's probably for something like Dante. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I'm sure that's for like things like Dante. You can have that right on the front to manipulate that protocol if you have that functionality or use that. And then of course, an about section, which is letting you know everything you need to know for your actual piece. Okay, so let's talk about the Apogee Symphony IO Mark II Special Edition and what it has. So for me, it's very, very modular. And what I mean by that is when I looked at it for the first time, I was a bit confused because I was trying to understand which one I wanted to buy. But I quickly realized that you can configure this thing to exactly your needs. Instead of having a bunch of different interfaces out there with a bunch of different inputs and output configurations, they've created these module sections in the back. For instance, on mine, I have two modules. One module I have is an eight x eight connect MP, which allows me to have eight ins, eight outs, as well as some digital protocols like SPDIF, AES, et cetera. And then I have another module up above that, that's the 16 by 16. That gives me 16 ins and 16 outs, as well as some more digital protocols. I was really, really on the market looking for an interface that could give me a lot of ins and outs in one single box, as opposed to say something like my Prison Sound Titan, I would need to buy another box in order to get just even 16 channels of ins and outs. Granted, I could have upgraded to the ADA, their more expensive interface, but it, it was really expensive for all those channels. So being that I have all these inputs and outputs now with the modules and I can also upgrade later and not have to switch out my entire Symphony IO, I can just buy a new module if I need to upgrade my entire studio is super powerful. I'm also ready for at most mixing because I have so many outs in a single box when the time comes for that. After talking with Apogee a lot about the piece, you know, I asked them about the inspiration behind this piece and what it is. They explained to me that a lot of these pieces and components in this box are so new. Some of the parts at the time of this recording were only available to the public as of recently of a year or two, which is letting me know that this is the latest technology that I'm getting as far as the audio, as far as chipsets and conversion and all kinds of things. It was even explained to me within the piece to get nerdy that every single channel of conversion has double the conversion on it, giving a higher dynamic range, less noise, and just overall, just a better sound quality. It's the small things like that, that I feel like Apogee has really paid attention to on the piece that gives me that sound that I've been looking for for so long. Apogee is known for this. This is their thing, it's conversion. So this is what made me even investigate and decide to see what they had going on over there with the piece. Now, I will mention that Apogee was so gracious to send me out the piece because I was so intrigued and wanted to test it, but I think we know how this is gonna go now at this point. I'm gonna be buying this from you guys. And girls, hi Betty, hi Marlene. Note that this can also use SoundGrid, Dante, as well as Pro Tools HD. Once again, super modular, and you can switch out to whatever your needs are as far as those card options. Speaking of Atmos and monitor setups and things of that nature, it also allowed me to get rid of this piece. This right here, which I've had for years. This is my monitor station. I'm sure a lot of you may have something similar to, similar to that in this regard. It allowed me to take this and turn it into, drum roll please, just this right here. And it's so clutch, it's so small, and it's everything I need. Absolutely everything I need as far as my sound is concerned. The beautiful thing about this remote control that literally you can get with the actual Apogee Symphony is that the fact that you can control a different array of speakers. I've literally controlled and made different sets of configurations when it comes to my monitors. Do I just wanna hear the front two speakers that are closest to me? Do I wanna hear the sides? Do I wanna hear the sub? Do I wanna hear a combination of some of them? 
this is just w one of the many things that I can do with just this Apogee control remote uh, with the Symphony control app, which I'll show you later. The Apogee Symphony also uses D sub connectors, which at first I was a little scared of, but then when I realized how much cleaner the back of my interface was and how much less wires I'm using, I realized really fast, oh, this is gonna help me so much. So let's take a look at the Apogee control remote. When you look at it, you see these numbers, you see these letters, and you see these symbols. You can make any of these numbers and letters manipulate anything you want in the control app or just in general. You can change it to manipulate things like monitor workflows, whether that be going to your Atmos setup or a stereo setup or a 5.1 setup or whatever configuration or monitor workflow you choose or have set up in your system. It can even be changed to be just a polarity switch or turn on the 48 volts. It can be whatever you choose. You can make this thing do anything you want in the app itself. You also see that I can click this button right here. And this is basically allowing me to cycle through my inputs and change how much level is going in them and out of them right from the piece as opposed to actually going in the app or actually touching the piece itself. Obviously I got my headphones here where I can manipulate them up or down, turning them and I have my speaker volume where I can just manipulate them down or up. So in the app, this allows you to interface with this piece and allows you to control, set up, and manipulate the sound and configuration any way you want. Okay, so now let's take a look at the Symphony Control app. Check this out. So in the front, I'm greeted with obviously my inputs and my outputs. Simple, thank you Apogee. At the very top, you can see all of my inputs, which is about 24 inputs and 24 outputs, followed by some inputs and outputs relating to the digital side as far as ADAT, SPDIF, and things of that nature. If you look on over here, you can also see that when it comes to my actual outputs, I can choose what signal I want to feed that output being that analog one and two is one of my speakers, I basically have playback one and two from my DAW or from whatever I'm playing for coming right into these speakers. I can also create different sets of speakers as well by just changing it to, this is speaker set one, and I want speaker set one to have this speaker as well as, for instance, this is my sub on five six, this speaker. And now the beautiful thing about that is when I click here and configure the remote that I'm showing you guys, I can basically choose what configuration is what just by clicking one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D and configuring these things right on the Symphony IO. So I can literally choose what I want each button on my remote control to actually represent, whether that be a polarity switch, high pass filter, instantly. I can literally manipulate this entire thing to my liking as far as what I want. Even the big knob, I can change it to whatever I want when I press it uh, in the actual I.O. So on the right hand side, you can obviously see that I have uh, simple controls, things like mutes, sum to mono, dim, and here is where I can configure those different things as far as my speakers is concerned. So when I'm ready to go into Atmos, I can literally create the set of speakers that I want this set to be and manipulate it to my liking. So when I press one, this one is only gonna play off of my JBL speakers. When I press two, as you can see, this five and six came on, which is my sub, it plays the sub. So one of my remote control is the singular uh, JBL speakers. And then two of my remote control is the JBLs with the sub. If I hit three, three now switches me over to my HS7 speakers. And you guessed it, if you hit four, four will go to my HS7s plus my sub. Granted, you can manipulate it to whatever you want. Right over here, you can see this is where I can change that input and basically this is kind of my way to calibrate my system. For me, negative 14 DBFS worked great as far as being able to have exactly what's coming out, come back in at the same level, plus or minus maybe 0.2 dB, which is fine. I'm not losing sleep over that, being that it's so close. But the fact that I can actually manipulate this and change this to something even quieter for a hotter system is awesome. If you wanna clip your converters, you can do that as well and hitting this SL button is awesome to do that. The last thing I'll make sure that I note in this that I really think you guys should know about is this mix side, which is a mixer. Of course, you can see this is obviously a mixer, but the great thing about this is the fact that I can create different 
mixers, meaning I can create different configurations and styles for whatever I'm doing. If I'm doing a podcast, I can change the, the mixer uh, configuration to mixer two, for instance, mixer two being, oh, mixer two will be my podcast setup or mixer three will be straight up just my studio or mixer four will be when I'm creating stuff with bands and things of that nature. And when you create those mixers, as far as those configurations, as far as the left and right, how much input and things of that nature, what you can do is you can go right back over to the IO and change the entire system to that mixer, which I think is awesome for just having the ability to just change things on the fly, but at the same time, just set it up without having to think so hard about any of that stuff. Being able to create mixers and save them is awesome. Okay, so now, I mentioned at the very beginning of this video that I switched over from my Prism Sound Titan to the Apogee Symphony IO Mark II Special Edition. Let's hear them against each other. Let's hear what the converters of the Prism Sound Titan do to the exact same song compared to the Apogee Symphony IO Special Edition Mark II. Okay, so if you pick A as the Apogee Symphony IO Mark II Special Edition, you are correct. And if you pick B for the Prism Sound Titan, you are correct. The difference is what I heard between the two. Both are phenomenal pieces. At the beginning of this video, I told you I was looking for something that sounded hi-fi, modern, that was different. When I listen to the Apogee Symphony IO, here's what I notice in comparison to the Prison Sound Titan. The sound stage. The width and the dimension and the sound stage of that Apogee is insane to me. It's huge, it's massive. Even the top end of the mixes, as far as what you heard, has more airiness and and brightness, and it, it does it in such a pleasing way. It really sounds like kind of like that oversampled sound that we get sometime in our plugins when we click it, where it starts to feel like this high fidelity style of, of music, which is what I was looking for, that modern day sound. I feel like the transients as well felt sharper. They hit, granted, with the Prism Sound Titan, for me, known for that low end, the way it reproduces that bottom. It's absolutely stellar in that regard. But when it came to the Apogee Symphony, I loved it as well. It was tight and it sounded great. It feels like the Prism Sound has this warm sound, but the Apogee Symphony has this warm plush sound. And what makes it warm and plush is the fact that that top end is so sparkly and so airy and so nice and clean that it, it gives me that sensation that I was looking for from a modern sound. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the Prism Sound Titan. It was a taste perspective, but at the same time in it being a taste perspective, I just enjoyed the sound of the Apogee Symphony. It opened up the mid range. It made my low mids even feel a little bit more weighty in, in, in the way it was just bringing across the bass. There were a lot of things to enjoy about that. It really was pleasing to my ears and I was super happy about it because it even felt a little bit more stereo sounding as opposed to the Prism Sound Titan, which is very known for that low end and that boom it kind of feels a little bit more mono in that respect. And I was looking for something to give me a wider, more open, more cleaner sound. If I'm looking for something to give me a more wider, cleaner, more open sound, I'm going with my Apogee. That's really what I was looking for. Something that felt hi-fi. So I also level match those files to make sure that they're within about 0.4 dB uh, of volume uh, uh, in comparison to each other. Something I noticed about the Apogee Symphony is that being that these transients are feeling a lot sharper, it may look or feel like from the metering standpoint that the meters are showing it's a bit hotter uh, when you're looking at it on a meter in comparison to another. But I quickly realized these transients feel sharper and that's what's making those peaks feel just a little bit, a little bit hotter. And that's why I said I put it within about 0.4 dB 
of each other. I felt more life <laughs> with the piece. And I feel like it's doing that and it's doing some awesome things to my dynamics when it comes to my transients and that clarity that it's giving to those transients, making them feel sharper. So I wanna thank Apogee for sending me over the piece and letting me try this thing out. I'll be very honest with you. When it comes to an interface that I feel like is future-proof and I'm probably gonna be with this for the next 10, 15, who knows how many years, I'm good to go. This piece gives me everything I want, plus I am still have the, the ability to actually upgrade it just by switching out modules if I need more in the future. I'm also able to upgrade and, and get my Atmos system now in this room, being that I got all these ins and outs that I really want to use. Even with my summing amp, I have the choice of now stemming out all of my signals and getting more separation and a bigger sound uh, because I have so many inputs and outputs in one solid box. So again, thank you so much to Apogee. Um, please make your own decisions. This is not a review. This is just a breakdown and this is just me showing you my piece and comparing it to other things, letting you hear it for yourself. You make your own decisions. I chose to go with the Apogee Symphony IO Mark II Special Edition because the, the mastering grade converters on this thing is just legendary. And I think that's something that gets overlooked so much when it comes to our audio industry, when it comes to conversion, and not forgetting that Apogee is known for that. That is what they do. Thank you guys again for watching and please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Also make sure you, com you comment and tell me what else you would like to see on this channel. Make sure you follow us at Help Me Devon on Instagram and also make sure you listen to that My Audio Nerds podcast every Wednesday and join our Discord community with a bunch of inspiring engineers like yourself, trading secrets and giving game. Again, I hope that was helpful and until next time you guys.